Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you, GFL, for this opportunity. And I am so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have connected with some wonderful, wonderful people here. And uh, what I'm very happy about is what's brought us together, which is our passion to make a difference in the lives of uh, students. So thank you once again, GFL. And to introduce myself, my name is Taruna Ramani. I'm the founder of Power Speakers Unlimited, a company that is investing, invested in bringing joy into the lives of students through public speaking. And I am also a teacher, a teacher of learners, some by their choice and some by the choice made by their parents. It's unfortunate that public speaking is a life skill and yet it's an extracurricular activity, which means there's always a choice that someone has to make about public speaking. Now, what I want to talk about today is that something that I have observed in my years of experience working with children and something that has been validated hundreds of times, which is that each and every child has a mind that has unlimited possibilities. And when a child enters into a learning environment, what a child sees is boundaries. And then a mind that is limitless, a mind that is free flowing like air and water, learns to restrict itself within the boundaries created by us educators. Have you realized that younger kids, they always have more to speak? Younger kids, they, the filters are down. And as these kids, they grow older, they are more stilted in their communication, which is true. So today, what I want to talk about is, I want to talk about the boundaries. And before I talk about the boundaries, I want to define those boundaries. There are different kinds of boundaries when we talk about learning for children. The boundaries could be um, home life. The boundaries could be life around um, in school. The boundaries could be health. The boundaries could be a child's innate ability. Each of these topics can be a topic in themselves. But what I want to speak about is what the boundary that you and me as educators impact when we are dealing with children. That is the boundary that I want to speak about. What is our purpose as educators? I've heard this a few times from some very, very passionate educators. One sitting right here, Robert. What is our job as an educator? If we are focused on teaching, then our attitude is that we want to teach something. If we are focused on these children learning, our attitude would be completely different. We want these kids to learn. And I very strongly feel that's only going to happen when the joy is within them. So there was this woman, and she had a beautiful um, space for in her backyard, and she wanted to do something there. So she called a landscaper, and the landscaper came, and the landscaper looks at the backyard, and he is excited about this one corner. And then he walks towards that corner, and he says, aha, you know what? I'm going to make something perfect in this corner, because I have an idea. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a zen ambiance for you. I'm going to put a Buddha statue here. Um, probably I'll put some fountains. And you are going to enjoy the space. The woman is looking around. She's looking at that entire space. And she's like, OK, what you're saying is good. But I still have this space around. And the guy says, you know what? I really want to do something here because I know what I can do. And I know that you will enjoy it. She's not the expert, he is. She gives in. He brings his team and starts thinking about the project that he has for that one corner. She had to call another landscaper. And this landscaper comes to say, you know what? Um, someone is already taking care of that. 
it will look good. I want to give you a swing in this area and I'm going to make it beautiful. Guys, there's still a lot of open space. Two different landscapers with two different visions. This is not a true story, but there is a connect. Each one of us is a landscaper here and we are working on this massive empty space that can be, um, that's fertile, that can be worked on, where magic can be created. But what we are missing is the big picture. Um, there was this um, school critic and an author who in 1969, he said something very powerful. He said the experience of learning is the experience of wholeness. And I very strongly believe we are missing the big picture. Each one of us is looking at one area and wants to do the best there. That Buddha statue in that corner will not do, is not enough for that entire land, at that entire space. We as teachers, we are the landscapers. How can we work with a vision that is so small for a child's mind that is so fertile? As I said, there are a lot of boundaries that we can talk about. Some of them could be um, red tape. There could be boundaries around budget, finance. I don't want to go there because you and I, we cannot control that. But what we can control is certain things as teachers. Let me go into the boundaries that I think are big boundaries. One of them is, the first one, according to me, is curriculum. The curriculum that we have, the curriculum that we've created, is a tight, rigid curriculum. And we want, the teachers are overwhelmed because they have to cover everything in that curriculum and they are answerable. I am very happy that I am not working in a school system and I have the choice of doing what I want to when I'm dealing with children. I create my own curriculum and the biggest core value that Power Speakers Unlimited is, has is that we have fun, period. I'm not going to take the fun away from learning because I have seen um, I have seen that when joy multiplies, learning is long-term. So to me, curriculum is a big barrier in the way of the joy that these children need in that learning space. Can someone help me here? The second is expectations. When there is a curriculum, there is going to be an expectation, right? Even in life, in our life, when we have expectations, it leads to stress. Can you imagine a child? Sometimes those children, they struggle. Sometimes they do not have the ability for them to go through that stress to match the expectations of their teachers. How right is that? And it, what it brings is, it brings in a sense of inability. And they, they start to believe in their inability. What they look at is the barrier, not the possibility. So that is what an expectation creates. There are three, I, I feel there are three um, kinds of um, brackets that these children are put in. First is the achievers who are doing phenomenally well. And everyone's eyes are on them and they say, you know what? There is scope for them to do better. And there are programs that is so much for them. And on the other end of the spectrum are kids who are not doing well. And there is something for them as well because they need help. And then there are kids in between who are your average kids who are just cruising by 
there's nothing for them. Because there is no red flag which means we've not tapped into their possibilities at all because there are no red flags. The third one to me is common sense. As teachers, as educators, what we are celebrating is the common sense, which is that the perceptual ability of a child, that's what we are focusing on. If we are only focusing on the perceptual ability of the child, what about the imaginative ability of a child? Do you think Einstein would have gotten where he wanted to if he did not have the imagination? And as Einstein himself says, imagination is more important than uh, knowledge because knowledge is a barrier. Imagination takes you everywhere. So to me, there, there could be more barriers. In my years of experience, I have identified these three barriers that come in the way of the joy that these children need. And that brings me to the three C's that I think are um, the three C's that bring joy. Let's start with the first one. First is creativity. If there is no scope for creativity, a child is following our instructions as teachers. We are the ones who are directing. And the child is literally following. Let me give you an example. And this literally happened last week. Um, I had a second grader and we were doing end of the year presentations at Power Speakers Unlimited. And I asked him, what do you want to talk about? And that child tells me, oh, you know what? I want to talk about the day I become the president of Ukraine. Where did that come from? None of us knew. And I said, excellent, great job. So is that what you talk, want to talk about? He said, yes. I said, beautiful. And so what do you want to do if you were the president of Ukraine for one day? He said, you know what? I'm going to make it into a cat day. I was like, wow, a cat day. He says, yes, because all the cats in Ukraine are going to celebrate. We're going to give them yarn to play with. I'm like, fancy, and what else? He says, oh, I'm going to call a scientist to take care of um, the farmers and everyone because everyone, then there'll be more crops and everything and everyone will be rich and then they will play golf. And he literally picked a golf ball and he says, they will all play golf. I'm like, wow, that is that child's imagination. There is a possibility in that child's mind, the limitless possibility, if I control it, the child will know in his head that he cannot become the president of Ukraine. How, how does that even make sense? Which means that he is not, he is controlling his imagination and his joy. He was so excited when he was talking. We were all smiling because his eyes were twinkling with joy. And that is something that I very strongly feel that should be a part of learning. The second is connect. Now, there are two facets to connection. One is a connect between a teacher and a student, which is so, so important. I always say this, and I don't get tired saying that each and every child has something to say and wants to be heard. Just because a child is um, an extrovert, does not mean that he has more to say. Each and every child has something to say. Each and every child wants to be heard. So what do we do? How do we make it work so that um, they want to share what they want to share? How do we do that? When we as teachers connect with them, when they know that we are on their side, and it is so important, each and every child needs to know that we are there for them. That connection between teacher and a child is so super important. And the other connection is the connection between the child and um, the curriculum, the course content that we have created. If a child does not feel connected with that, there's nothing magical that will happen. I am very um, proud to say that at Power Speakers Unlimited, 
we are able to do that. Because um, when I was designing the core values, I was very clear what I wanted. When I was designing the curriculum, I was very clear what I wanted. And when I inducted the teachers, I was very clear that they know the expectations that we have from each and every student. Learning cannot be, learning cannot be restricted to a classroom environment. Learning should be such that a child steps out of the class and is still thinking, looking, observing, absorbing, and creating. That's what learning is. Your role and my role cannot define what a child's mind can do. And the third is challenge. I feel that when creativity and connect are there, a child is willing to be challenged. Not just that, when creativity and connect are there, a child self-challenges. He's ready to challenge himself. I use the word magic a lot. And then we can see the magic happen. You and I, we have big roles to play in here is what I feel as educators. We are not just the captain of the ship, we are the mentors. And we have to do what we can to bring that joy of learning. When I talk about all of this, this is not theory. This is something that I very strongly believe. This is something that um, we work with, and this is something that has been able to create the magic in the children. We deal with five-year-olds, all the way from five years to 18 years. How do you engage a five-year-old so that a five-year-old comes back year after year after year, wants to be there? So this is how I look at it. This is what I um, wanted to share, which was my three Cs. And I also want to say, I have, I have a very dear friend who's an author um, and a scientist. And in his book, um, Social Consciousness Pedagogy, he has humanized the serenity prayer. So instead of God, he says, mind, mind, give me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So let's all consciously in our mind follow that serenity prayer and do what we can to bring that joy in learning and create that magic. Thank you, guys. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. I was thinking that uh, we are all, um, and I've been, I've been speaking to so many of us, and I feel that there is a common synergy between all of us, and that's why we are here together. Um, we are all passionate. We all want to make a difference, and, um, and I think we are all doing it in our own space. So thank you all, and if anyone has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Looks like we don't because, yes. Go, Mikaela. Yes, I do. I was telling someone this morning, as people say, um, you know, there are some people who would say, oh, I'm a dog whisperer and I'm a horse whisperer. I am a child whisperer. I see the struggle that they are going through. I want them to feel safe. I, I want to give them, I want them to know that they have a voice. I want them to develop that voice. And also, as I was introduced, I'm also a cancer survivor. My cancer journey and Power Speakers Unlimited. Cancer, I was diagnosed with cancer and we, I was getting treated with cancer at the same time Power Speakers was growing. So it was God's will that um, I stay connected with children even during my cancer. And he's given me this responsibility, Mikhaila, to take care of them and to take them 
to the next level, to make them know that they all have a voice. They all have a voice and they should believe in themselves. So that is how Power Speakers Unlimited Curriculum is created end to end by me and with a lot of love. And I'm able to see the joy in each and every student. And up until now, I've said this to a few people, Power Speakers has been running on word of mouth. So um, it's the love that's carrying Power Speakers forward and it's my love for my students that's carry carrying us forward. Mikaela, does that answer your question? Yeah. You're so welcome. Thank you very much, everyone. And I wish you all good luck. <laughs>